All right, so let's get started. Um, so previously we were doing the visualization, so we started by exploring these, um, uh, the various features that we have, right? So we started doing some visualizations over here. So what we're going to do right now is actually um, start with the features. We're going to deal with the features, right? So this individual feature. So we're going to do some uh, feature engineering or feature transformation over here. Now, if we take the item weight, right? If we take the item weight, now let's go a little bit back. Let's go a little bit back over here. And then um, let's put something over here. Now, after after we, we we loaded our data, right? We realized that the item the item weight was having um was having some null values. That is one thousand four hundred and sixty three null values. And then also the item size, the outlet size rather, right? It's also having some null values in there. The same thing that is that is that is um the training data right now if we also take the test data right if we take the test data it's also having um some null values that is the item weight and also the item uh the outlet size right don't forget after after everything we concatenated everything um, into one data frame called df right so now we're going to deal with this um this this null values right that's what we're going to actually do so starting with this feature engineering let's go a little bit down yeah now over here what we're going to do is to actually deal with this this um this null values now we can replace we can decide to even drop these null values right we can decide to drop them but um if we drop these null values we we are going to lose significant information right which is going to help us to make um good models later on which is going to help us to actually um make make good model and take good decisions so we don't want to lose that particular information so what we can do is to actually replace it with either the mean the median or maybe the mode right of, of the of the column now if we see the distribution of this um this item weight right if we see the distribution of that let's let's go a little bit up and let's see something over there now uh let's go and see the box let's take the box plot for instance if you see um this is the item weight right this is the item weight right we can see that it's, it's, it's normally distributed it says a gaussian right it's normally distributed so if there's normal dis normally distributed it means that um we um we can use the mean as as, as a method of of um replacing the null values right because now it's not i mean affected by outliers it's not affected it's not skewed right so now we can see that this is normally distributed. So if it is normally distributed, then it's an ideal way. I mean, we can actually use the mean as 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 a way of imputing the null values. Um, unlike if it is skewed, then I mean the mean would not actually be a better option. But if it's normally distributed, if it's Gaussian, then we can actually use the mean to actually do that. It's, it's not going to be affected by any any outliers over here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the mean to actually um replace these now values right so let's go a little bit down to where we are okay over here so now what we're going to do is to actually replace the the nans or the not a number or the missing values that are existing in the item item weight column right we're going to replace it with the mean now let's check the mean of that column and see what we have over there right let's let's check the mean over there right now, if we check the mean, we can find out the mean is some um, 12, right? 12.7 or 12.8 if you want to run it, right? Now, that is what we're going to use. So if we encounter any NAN, we are going to replace that NAN with, I mean, the, the mean of the column, right? So we go through the, we are going to go through, uh, let me, let me zoom out this one a little bit. Let me zoom out a little bit, yeah. Now, if we go through the, this column, right, which is the item weight column, if we go through the item weight column, yeah, if we go through this item weight column, right, if we go through that, and then um, if we encounter any N, A, N, right, which is not a number, right, if we encounter any not a number in there, we're going to fill it, we're going to fill that N, A, N with the mean of that column. Right, we're going to fill the NAN with the mean of that column. And then here I'm using in place equals true so that whatever changes that I'm doing over here will reflect in the original data set that we have, right, which is the DF, right? So whatever changes that I'm doing over here should reflect in the DF. So um, in the DF, in the DF, uh, we have the item weight column in the DF, right? So that's what we have here. DF, we have item weight column over there. So um, I'm going to replace any NAN over here with the mean, right? So I'm going to replace any NAN 
values that I have over here with the mean. Okay, that's what I'm going to actually do using the using the fill in a function over here. All right, so um, that's that that is done. So um, what I'm going to actually do over here is to also consider the the outlet size, right? Because we are having now values in in two of them, which is the item weight and the outlet size, right? If you want to confirm, you can see that we have it over here, right? The uh, this okay, this is the concatenation of our the, um over here we have the item weight then we have the outlet size right we have the outlet size so we have two now values actually uh, i mean i mean two two features that are having um now values in them so that's what we're going to do so we we've we've dealt with the item weight now we're going to do with the outlet size right so let's go down again and then see what we're doing okay so now here we, we are done with item weight now outlet size if we see the outlet size right and then um outlet size is actually actually not not uh, an integer or a float that we can replace with the mean or the median right so what are we going to do over here is that um for the outlet size the the item that actually appears frequently right the item that appears frequently is the medium right so most of the outlets are medium size Right, most of the items are medium size. So if we don't have the outlet size, then we can assume that um, these outlet size are likely to be medium size because most of them, I mean, around four thousand six hundred fifty-five of the outlet size, uh, uh, I mean, uh, are medium, right? So if we don't have um, these these data being recorded, then we can assume that they is likely they might be um, a medium size right so that's what we're going to actually do so we're going to replace all those data points that are not available with um, a medium sized a medium size outlets outlets i mean outlets of of the shop right so now if we go into the uh, the outlet size right if we pick the outlet size we're going to replace all those nan with the medium Right with me with with medium, we are going to assume that they are they they are all uh, or they were medium size outlets outlets right. So now if we check again, if we check again, um, df dot is now dot sum right. If we do that again, now we can see that um, if we pick outlet size right, outlet size is no more having any now values right. The same thing, uh, item item weight right. Item weight is also not having any any um, now values right. Um, now, out item outlet sales, right? It's having there are now values in the end. This is expected. Remember, um, when, in the previous video, when we were concatenating these these values, right? We go a little bit up, right? When we concatenated this, we pointed out that um, the test data is not having item outlet sales, right? So, if it's not having out item outlet sales, then it's going to be if we put all of them together, right? If we put the all of them together, then we are going to have NAN being represented here, right? NAN being represented because we don't have this one to be here, right? We don't have this outlet sales to be here, right? So, we don't have so all, all these points are going to be missing values if we put them together, right? So um, that shouldn't be a problem. That shouldn't be a problem with um, with us because um, it's, it's understandable. It wasn't available, so we expect it to be so. Okay. So um, the next, the next. Um, uh, let me go a little bit up. Okay. So we dealt, we dealt with this. We dealt with this. We are done with with all this, right? We we are done with item weight and out outlet size. So um, let me go a little bit up. Okay, now we're going to deal with item visibility, right? Item visibility. Now, this is this is something that we need to um, take care of, um, which which is very important as you data scientists. You need to actually um, take care of. Now, if we go into the item visibility column, right? If we go into the item visibility column, there are some item visibility that have been marked at zero, right? Now, if an item is at a more I mean, why would the item be zero? Even if it is at the back there, even people, if people walk all the way back there to have it, if the item is not um, at the front of the shop, right? If the item is not 
are placed at the front of the shop and even if they are the people have to walk all the way back there to find partic that particular item and then pick it it is still visible there is just that it is not um at the front right it's not at the front of the shop or um when you enter the shop it is not just right there right but it's still it is still there right it is still it is still at the at the shop okay it is still at the shop so um what what this one is showing us that if the item has been marked at zero it means that the item was not available right it, it was not available at all that's why it has been marked as zero so instead of maybe um representing it as 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 nan it has been marked as zero right meanwhile it was supposed to be if, if the item once the item is there it's visible right once the item is there it is visible if the item is not there at all then we can say that it is zero right so um, just like in the item weight we're having NAN missing values is the same way that the items that were not present at the shop um, to be displayed at the shop whether at the back of the shop or uh, whether at the far end of the shop or in front of the shop were marked as zero right so we will treat that um, the zeros in the item visibility as as as, as null values right the zeros in the item visibility as null, null values now after we checked right now after we checked um after we checked the number of null values that we have in the item visibility we realized that we have around 800 and 879 of these zeros right so some items that were not present at the shop maybe they were out of stock or something like that so um they were marked as zero because they were not there at all they were not being displayed at all right so we have around 800 and 879 okay so we're going to fill this this and with the median right we are going to fill this with the median now if we check the distribution of this item visibility let's go a little bit up and then see the distribution of um of item visibility right uh, maybe we can use this one now you can see that this one is skewed right unlike unlike what we did with the item weight where um where we're having almost normal distribution over here right uh, this one is skewed it's right skewed right so we cannot use the mean over here right this one is right skewed and we cannot use the mean over here so the best i mean the, i mean the, the 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 other option that we can use over here will be the median right it will be the median because if we use the mean it's actually going to give us the trouble now if you use if you see the item visibility box plot of here right now if you see this one you can see that it's, it's, it's right skewed there are some outliers here and the mean is actually susceptible to outliers it's actually going to be affected with outliers that we have over here so it's going to be i mean it's going to be a bad choice if you want to use the mean as as as, as a way of imputing the 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 null value so what we're going to use is the median which is quite ideal in this in this kind of a scenario okay so we're going to replace the NANs with the median of, of this column, right? So let's go uh, all the way down here and then, um, yeah. So that's why that's why you can see over here that uh, we are going to fill the NAN. Uh, we're going to fill the NAN values with, with, with um, the median, right? And then we are saying that in place equals true. So that whatever changes we're doing here, we will flatten in the original data set, okay? Now let's go to the outlet years, right? Let's check the outlet years column two and then see what is over there. Now, if we do the value counts, right, for the outlet years, we can see that um this data, uh, if we see the range, I mean, I think uh, the 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 least year over here is nineteen eighty five, right? It's nineteen eighty five, and then uh, all the way to two thousand and nine, all the way to two thousand and nine. Now, what do we now have is the number of years that's um in. I mean, these outlets have uh, have been established since they established how what is the number of years? We don't actually know that, right? Now, in order for us to know that, we subtract each of the years from two thousand and nine, which is the latest, which is the latest year that this data set uh, was actually given us, right? So, this data set was collected right from nineteen eighty five till um 2009 till 2009 right so in order for us to get the years we actually use 2009 minus any of the other years that we have over there right any of the years so that you give us um the years that each of these outlets have been established right um over here we could have also used um 2010 right to to be to be on the silver side we could have also used 2010 because 2009 also minus 2009 will actually give us um zero right so it's actually going to give us zero which means um those those outlets that were established in 2009 
right? It will also be subtracted by 2009 and it's actually going to give us zero, which means they don't have any years. They, they've not been, been I mean, have uh, accumulated for any years, right? But so maybe you could have also used 2010 minus 2009, right? You can also do that one so that those that were established in 2009 will also be counted for us maybe one year, okay? So you can also consider that. So, um, that's what we do because what, what we're doing actually uh, mainly here is to get rid of the years, right? To get rid of the years so that we can actually get a, a quantified value, maybe um, four years, right? Maybe um, the, the, the outlet has been established for about four years, right? For, for the past four years or maybe for the past two years, something like that, right? That's what we actually want to arrive at. So uh, we did that, we did that. Now you can see that the maximum years, right? The maximum years uh, that we actually um, have it here. Don't forget this one. We are using describe, so obviously we expect this kind of, uh, of, of of high values in there, right? This is twenty four, right? So um, maximum is twenty four years. Minimum is minimum is zero years. That is, you see that we have zero years. That is two thousand and nine minus two thousand and nine. That is what is happening over here. Okay, and then the mean the mean year the mean year or the average year of of these outlets is. It's 11 years okay so um that's that's also that is it for for the outlet years now we can also check the item type right we can check for the item type now if we take the item type column for instance right and if we do the value count on that if we do the value count on that on the item type we can see that we have um fruits and vegetables okay we have fruits and vegetables and the count of that is um, 2013, right? I mean, not years. This one is not in years. This one is in quantity. So uh, we have two, 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 from 1 to 2000, counting from 1 all the way to 2013, right? So this is not years over here. So we have snacks, snacks. We have 1,989. We have household 1,548, right? All the way down. So now you can see most of the items uh, that are present i mean that are that are of more quantity at the shop maybe if you want to consider the first three you can consider this and that maybe uh, that is fruits fruit and vegetable snacks and then household right if you want to consider the first three all right so this this basically what we have at the, at the item item type now what is happening is that for these item types right for these item types an id have been associated with each of these item types now if you see this uh, let me zoom a little bit out now, if you see this right now, if if it is a food item, right, it has been associated starting with FD, right? With this food item, it has been associated starting with FD. Uh, let me go a little bit up. If it is food item, right, so some are food items, right? Some are food items, as you can see over there. Some, some, some are food items. So depending on the particular item, if it is food item, it's being associated the id of that particular item is being associated with uh, fd most of the most of them also do that because um they actually want to um get to know the now the inventory they have they want to actually um put everything on on paper they want to actually know what is going out and what is coming in right so they actually need to give these kind of ids to these particular items so over here that's what is actually happening right so if 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 this um if it is non-consumable, non-consumable goods, maybe like clothes or something like that, they start with NC, right? Non-consumable, right? If it is food item like that, FD. If it is, um, if it is a drink, they start with DR, right? They start with DR. So these are kind of um, the way they give the IDs to these particular items. So all these are things that you need to identify as data scientists before moving on to 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 work on your data set. All right, now. What is, what is, I mean, the problem here is that if we have these items, right? So basically, uh, we have 16 categories here. If, if, if you sit down and you do, you do this analysis, if you get a notebook and you do that, right? We have 16 different, 16 different categories, right? With these FDs and NCs and um, DRs that we have, right? Now, they've done this and uh, they ended up with 16 categories, right? But if you look at it carefully, we have only food items, we have drink items, then we have items that are not consumable, all right? So we can group them into these categories, items that are under food items, and items that are drink items, items that are non-consumables, right? So we can group them under three categories. Now, what we're doing here is to reduce 
to reduce the the number of features that we have because if we have so many features we will end up with the case of what with the case of dimensionality here right we'll be ending up with the case of dimensionality which um is actually uh, another problem to deal with right uh, maybe we will go all the way by applying some pca on this which we 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 don't want to actually end up at at that end so what we want to do is to actually um make a reasonable category for all these data points that they have inputted over here so now with this code that you see here with this part that you see here what i'm going to do is to actually select only the the first i mean from zero to to between zero to two if we do this it means that zero and one right so the, that's the, that's if we have um we have an id like this uh let me go a little bit up if we have an id um if you take um for instance this this is non-consumable right so if we have an id like this right i'm just going to select this two right so uh, if i if we're starting from nc then i can rename i can group this under non-consumable if we're starting from fd i can group this as as food if you're starting from dr i can group it under drinks right so these are three categories that i want to do and in order for me to select those right i'm just going to do this so that i can select only only the first two right so that's what i'm using this lambda function for right i'm using this lambda function and and then um i'm, I'm doing this on the item identifier right and then i'll create a new column i'll create a new column that will contain this that will contain these groups right that is the new item type right so i'll create a new column that will contain this which is new item type right that will contain this now after doing that after doing that now i can come back i can come down here right i can come down here and then i'll say that um with this new type column that i created right let me change this with this new type column that i created right now what I'm going to do is to create a dictionary here. So if if I pick, remember I just picked the the IDs, right? That is the first whether it's it's either FD, right? Or it's either FD or it's either DR, right? It's either DR or it's either NC, right? That's I just picked only the two. So if I see FD, I rename it as food. If I see NC, I rename it as consumable. If I see DR, I rename it as drinks, right? So and now I'm going to have one. Um, two and then three categories right only three categories okay so if i do that and then i do value count again now you can see that i have food right i have food then i have non-consumables and drinks okay so instead of having all the 16 categories which were actually um saying the same thing which was actually giving me the same information right as as just as just three categories i can just reduce it to three categories over here okay now having uh having done that so let me just run this having done that over here what i'm going to do right what i'm going to do over here is um now uh if if a product is non-consumable just let's let's think about this one if a product is non-consumable then why are we going to associate a fat content to the product right some of the products um if they say drink right if it's drink if it is drink they can actually say that this drink is 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 a fat product there's fat in it, right? There's fat in it. Maybe um, some 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 uh, food items, some food items will also be allocated, will also be associated with fat content, right? But if we have say uh, if we have say baby powder, right? If we have say baby powder, then why are we going to say baby powder is having fat in it? I mean, it doesn't actually make sense, right? Or maybe we have um, we have women hair. Right, we have women here. All these are non-consumable products, right? So we cannot actually say that um, they, they, they have fat in it. We cannot do that, right? We cannot do that, okay? So that is what is actually going to happen. Well, that's what uh, we need to get rid of right now because that's a mistake that they have done in their uh, data sets. All these uh, things, some feature engineering things that you have to do to make sure that the features that you have in your data set are in order. Right, the features that you have in your data set are in order and that is what we are actually doing right now now what i'm going to do is that what i'm going to do is that in df right i'm going to i'm going to go into df and locate i'm going to go to df and then locate um locate the the new the new item type right remember i created new item type over here up there right and then um 
those those non-consumables right that have been associated with item content right those non-consumables that have been associated with item content what i'm going to do is to actually rename them as non-edible right i'm going to just rename them as non-edible okay i'm just going to rename them as non-edible so that um those those items will not be associated with fat right they will not be associated with fat no if you if i do that you can see that now i have only low fat regular and then non-edible right we i have um low fat regular and then non-edible at first we're having low fat regular and non-consumables right non-consumable products right so now i want to get rid of that because non-consumable products have been associated with fat which doesn't actually make sense if there's a cloth why would you associate fat content with the cloth i mean we do we don't actually see any sense in that we need to get rid of that okay now since that one is done right since that one is done now under normal circumstance right under normal circumstances as, 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 as i put here under normal circumstances now if a product is more visible then um it is likely that that product will get higher sales right we assume that if you go to if if a shop right if we have a shop right if we ha we we have a shop and then um the product that the shop will actually um put at the front right the product that they will put at the front people even those who are passing by who are just um those who are just passing by can easily spot those items and then buy right uh, rather than those ones that are actually um inside the shop that you cannot even spot them unless maybe you walk into the shop that you can actually find them but the ones that have been hung outside they can easily be spot and they can easily um, be bought right so under normal circumstances we have that hypothesis right although in this particular data set is not like that because this is um, a more which is having more consumable products than non-consumable product and people go there and buy consumable products which are not even visible right now if we base on that hypothesis, right? If we base on the hypothesis that items that are more visible uh, actually give more sales, right? We can actually do that and then see what items that the mall is actually giving weight to. Maybe if you go to um, the outlet, the mall outlet that is in say Chennai, right? That is in Chennai. They have particular item that they put in front, right? If you go to that, if you go to say Chennai, right? If you go to Chennai. There's particular item that they put they put um, in uh, 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 in front of the shop. If you go to say Delhi, right? If you go to say the Delhi um, outlet, right, or the Delhi branch, there's this but this this particular item that they put over there. If you go to say um, Haryana, right? If you go to say Haryana um, branch or outlet, the particular item that they put at the front right now. If we compare all these and then find some consistency in these items, right? Find some consistency in these items, then we can see that the more actually gives some weight to some of these pro to, to certain to certain products, and that's why if you go to all the outlets or all, all the branches, these items are in front of the shops. Right? These items are being placed at the at the at the front of the shops, right? Maybe those items actually give them higher sales, right? So we can actually um, see the weight that the the more actually gives to that. So that's what we are actually going to actually going to do over here. All right, that's what we're going to do over here. Now we just use a pivot table over here. We just use a pivot table over here, and then we select the item item visibility and the item identifier as you can see over here. So the item identifier actually, which is the um, the index of it. I mean the ID associated with each of the item visibility. You can actually see over here, right? So we can actually see the item identifier and then the item item visibility, right? So we just selected that and then we store it in a new variable called item visible average, right? So just a, just a variable name that I gave, you can just give any name that you want. All right. So now if we, if we do that, right, if we, if we select these two and then keep them, what we're going to do is to find the average of these, right? And then average of these items on all this, all the outlets or all the, all the, um, all the sub, sub, um, shops that are existing in say Chennai, in Delhi, in Haryana, that we just gave example a bit, right? So if we see the average weight that is being given to these items, then we can see that this particular item is having the more is more particular 
about these particular items because maybe they give them some some higher sales or something like that or they want to sell those items the more right so you actually need to know which items the more is more concerned about and that's what we're doing over here so we're going to use just the lambda function here and then um we're going to select item item visibility right and then uh with this don't forget don't forget this this um this item visit average is just nothing but containing these these things contain item identifier and item visibility so for each of these items for each of these items we divide it right we divide it by that you can see we can we can see the division sign over here right we divide it by the item visibility starting from the index starting from the index zero right starting from the index zero so we pick we pick each of them so starting from index zero we pick each of the item visibility and then start um, doing the division so that we get the average of that right and then after that um this one this one is actually going to be a function so we are going to apply that function right we're going to apply that function and on, on our data sets and then um we convert it to a float right we convert it to a float so that it will just still be this mouse as as we have over here okay now if we see the head of it right if we see the head of it you can see that don't forget that we created this item visit average right so we can see that we have we have item visit uh visit average over here that's the item visibility average over here right so these are the weights these are the weights that we've been associated with them right so some of the items have been associated with high uh, weights if you see uh, like a new item type that we created here like the food you see the weight that is having like 0 0.9 which is a high weight okay so that's what we actually want to know the weight that um these these are different items are having okay now if we see these um, these items right some some of them are actually categorical right some or if you see these features right some of them are actually categorical right now if we if let's 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 just take um let's just take the item content or item fat content here for instance right if you take the item fat content right for instance you see that low fat or regular fat or non eligible right you see that you see that low fat regular fat or non-eligible okay so it's, it's a categorical it's a categorical column if you take um outlet location type for instance let's go and see um outlet location type let's go and see outlet location type so it's either in tier one tier two or tier three cities right so it's categorical variable if we take outlet size for instance right if we take outlet size for instance is that you see that medium small or high okay if we take item item uh item new item type for instance which we created somewhere here it's either um it's either food drinks or non-consumable right so uh, that's that's what we have over here now um if you take out outlet um let me go a little bit up i think a little bit down yeah if you take if you take outlet over here right outlet over here is is, is nothing but this i just a new column that I, that I just created over here by using the this label label encoder right so what this label encoder is actually going to do um for us is actually going to give labels right so um let me let me talk about this before i talk about this label encoder so what i do is that i imported this label encoder from scikit-learn dot preprocessing right i imported that then i initialize it here now what i'm going to use this one for is that if we take say um item fat for instance item fat content for instance low will be associated with one label maybe maybe zero regular will be associated with say one right um non non edible will be associated with say two okay so instead of us having strings i mean um, um objects here right or categories here categorical variables here we are actually going to have labels right we are going to give them labels right like um low should be represented as one so if you see low low fat it should be it should be represented as one if you see regular it should be represented as say two all right so that's that's what i'm actually going to use the label encoder for us just to give you labels right now if we apply that right we apply that on this this uh, outlet identifier let's go and see what what is in this outlet identifier there right now if we see outlet um 
outlets identifier yeah this one you can see that it's not categorical actually right it's, it's not categorical actually now in order for us to actually convert this one to make it more categorical i just first um give it labels and then for the labels after after giving it labels i now do this fit again on that don't forget this 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 um label dot fit right it's something that i'm going to do on all of these right on all of these that's why you can see for i that's why you can see this for i in variable don't forget the variable is nothing but this this variable that contains everything here this variable that contains everything here so for any 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 column name that is in this that's what this part is actually saying so for i in variable for i in this variable right so for any item content that is here right for any item content that is here i'm going to apply the label right label is nothing but just just an initialization of the label encoder so i could have also used um just use this copy here i could have just done it this way all right so uh, i missed the l right so that's it will be um this this is capital l right so it will be just label encoder dot fit transform right so the but the best way if you, if you know a little bit about about um Objects, object oriented language. The, the the best way is to just initialize it at first, right? So that's what I'm just I just did over here, okay? And then I I just initialize it with this label. So I just use the label then dot fit transform. So fit transform all the items that are here, right? I didn't want to do it one by one. That's why I just created a list a list of these these columns and then store it in a variable called a variable. Then after that, I go into this variable and which contains all these items and then apply the fit transform on that. Okay, now, after doing that, if we see the item fat content, previously, item fat content was having low fat, regular, low fat, regular, non-eligible. Don't forget, we are just seeing only the head, which is the first five rows, so we could have go all the way to um, 4,000 something, right? Now, if we, after applying that, you can see that um, low fat, low fat has been labeled as zero right and then regular has been labeled as two right another low fat you can see that it's still zero right so whatever low fat appears will be represented as zero whenever um regular appears will be represented as two now which one is one here non-eligible non-eligible uh, non has been represented as one so whatever we see non-eligible we see uh, will be labeled as one right now all these columns if you go to outlet location type now let's go and see outlet location type outlet location type um here outlet location type now you can see that um previously outlet location type was um let me go here outlet location type was either tier one tier two uh tier three all right there was tier tier two also there don't forget this is just first five rows so tier two is also there now whatever outlet now it's been labeled right so if you see tier one it has been labeled as as um two as zero right if you see tier three it has been labeled as two right so that's what tier one as zero tier tier three as as two right that's what you see over there right the same thing for outlets outlet size it was medium um it was just medium small and high so medium um let me let me see what is over there medium yeah medium for for one high for uh, high for zero right high for zero so that's that's what it's going to do for all the columns that we we associated with right outlets we did for outlets so outlets was actually um remember outlets right outlet was outlet identifier so it was having all these it was having all these right all these different types diff nine different different outlets identifiers right has been associated so it will start from uh, i think it was 10 so it will start from zero all the way to nine so zero one two three uh, will be associated with all these different out identifiers that we have over here right now the after doing the level encoding what we need to actually take care of is now we have zero two zero two here now what the algorithm will actually try to do here is that it will try to think that two is greater than zero two is greater than one one is greater than zero right but it's it's not the case now if you go to this we cannot say that low fat is greater than regular or non non edible is greater than regular or non edible is greater than low fat we cannot say that but it's the same thing that is the same information that we have here right 
So in order to prevent the algorithm to actually rank this, we are going to use um, the get dummies function. Right? The get dummies function to actually create different columns for all these, these, these labels that we have. So zero will have its own column, two will have its own column, um, one will have its own column. Right, that's what you're going to do now. If we apply the get dummies on these 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 columns that we just did, so these columns are just the same columns that we're doing over here, just the same thing. Item fat content outlet location type all the way to outlet. Right, the same thing that item fat content all the way to outlet. So we're going to apply the get dummies on that. Now, if we do that, if we do that, if we come all the way down here. Now, um, this one right, item fat content, and then um, we're also having outlet location type we have an outlet size so all these were something we did using the um using 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 the the label encoder to do now let's just take this one for example outlets outlets right it's, it's just outlets over here now this was labeled right from zero to nine right so each of them zero will have its own column one will have its own column two will have its own column three will have its own column five will have its own column six will have its own column seven will have its own column eight will have its own column nine will have its own column that's what get dummies will do so that each column will have only only one only one and i mean one type right and there will be no ranking between if you see if you have one there will be no ranking between them okay now let's let's see what is happening in the table we'll get it now you can see here, we can see outlets, right? We can see out, out, outlets here. Outlet zero, outlet one, outlet two, outlet three, outlet four, all the way to outlet nine. So each of them will have its own column. Now, if we go into this again, right? Now, if you if you if it picks outlet zero, if it pick outlet zero, it will mark why zero appears as one. The rest will be zero, so it will have zero, zero, zero. And then one zero that's what is outlet zero is actually going to give us now let's go back and see outlet zero we see you have zero 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 one and then zero right that's whenever we see outlet zero whenever we see zero that's when one will be marked the rest will be marked as zero okay now if it goes to outlet one the outlet call out outlet one column all the rest will be marked as zero except where one appears will be marked as one let's go there and see if you see outlet one all the rest will be marked as zero except where one appears right if we go to outlet two if we go to outlet two right outlet two is there it's not showing here don't forget this one is just the head right let me just clean this one so that we can actually see okay now if we go here right now you can see um okay let me do let me do the same thing for this one let me do the same thing for this one Okay, it's because this one will be over. Uh, this one will override it because I have actually um, done it. So let me just do it this way, and then uh, I'll run it from the beginning. Just just one minute. So let me just run this thing. Okay, let me just run this one again because I have already done that. So it's going to actually override it. So let's yes, just one minute. Let it run, and then we can do that comparison. All right okay so now um now now you can see over here right now i said as i as we're talking about now the outlets the outlets i um, mean outlet column was actually having zero all the way to nine all right so i just i just cleaned i just get rid of this the head right instead of printing the first five rows i'm printing everything okay now i'm going to do the same thing for this one so that we can actually compare that right if i do the same thing for this uh let me run that okay now um, you can see it will have each of the columns outlet zero all the way to outlet nine, right? Now, if we take, um, for instance, outlet two, right? Whenever, whenever two appears, will be marked as one. The rest will be the rest that was having um, zero, one, two, three, whatever. I mean, zero, one, um, three, four, five, whatever values that is there is going to be marked as zero, with the exception of whenever two appears, right? So if you go to three column, for instance. Whenever three appears will be marked as one, the rest will be marked as zero. So if we encounter three to mark it as one, if we encounter three to mark it as one, the rest will be marked as zero, right? So that's what is happening. If you take it for instance here, it, if, if 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 we go here, right? As soon as it encounters, if if it is three, if 
As soon as encounters 3, it will be marked as 1. The rest will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 2. Encounters 3 again, it will be marked as 1. The rest will be 0, 0, 0, 2. And it gets to um, 3 again. The rest will be 0, 0, 0. Okay? So that's what that's what this this um, get to that means. So it's actually going to give us to help us get rid of this this kind of ranking that the algorithm might actually assume. Okay? So um we will consider we will consider the various algorithms that we can build based on based on what we have actually talked about so far okay